The NBA draft is a few hours away. I was all set. We had the huge trade last night, Marcus Smart being sent to the Memphis Grizzlies. I was set to just sit back, watch the draft, put a short little recap up and, and call it a day and be excited for what was to come. But no, the, the NBA cannot go a day without something crazy popping off, it seems. And now we have this blockbuster. Chris Paul is headed to the Golden State Warriors in exchange for Jordan Poole. And not just Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, a protected first-round pick in 2030, a second-round pick in 2027, and also second-round pick Ryan Rollins from 2022, uh, all going to Washington in exchange for Chris Paul, who was two weeks ago, as recently as two weeks ago, was being discussed as like a wave candidate. Like he was going to just get waved and go wherever. And now the Wizards have turned him into Jordan Poole, the first round pick that they did not get for Bradley Beal, albeit 2030 still. A first round pick from the Warriors in 2030 when presumably Steph, Clay, Draymond, and all of those guys will be gone could be a pretty valuable pick. Now for the Wizards, I think this does change uh, my stance on them a little bit. Last night I did the video about Porzingis to Boston, and I thought, you know, the Wizards are just going to tear it all down. They have a good asset in Tyus Jones that they could trade and get some more uh, picks with. But now they bring in Poole, it kind of makes me wonder, like, what the plan is. Like, are they going to try to tank? Are they bringing him in so they have someone that they could be like, you get all the shots, buddy? Like, go nuts, have fun. Are they going to have him run the offense? What are the plans now for Kuzma? Uh, granted, he would have to want to go back, but are they going to try to pay Kuzma? I, for one, would love to see the Wizards roll out a pairing of Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole. That's just me, but I think that would be must-see TV. Uh, I cannot lie. But for the Wizards, it makes sense. You get the pick. Uh, like, we said, like I said, Chris Paul was going to be waived. So they've turned that into... Dumping the Porzingis before having to sign him to a long-term deal. They get rid of Chris Paul and bring in more draft capital and Jordan Poole, who is only 24 years old. Uh, just turned 24, I believe. And now, you know, they get a, a pretty good chance at, at deciding how they want to go about it. Do they want to keep tanking? Do they want to build a, a young core here and kind of see what they can do? Uh, Jordan Poole, Tyus Jones, and Kyle Kuzma probably aren't doing a whole lot in terms of making you contenders, so they would probably need a little bit more, but, you know, this does make it interesting for them. It, it gives them a player, a nice young player, with, you know, you may not like Jordan Poole or not, but gives they have championship pedigree with one of their players. Like, he is an NBA champion. So, I understand this for the Wizards completely. But now, on the Warriors side of things, I'd be a little worried if I was a Warriors fan. I cannot lie. Mike Dunleavy Jr. takes over for Bob Myers, who stepped down as GM, and immediately trades 24-year-old Jordan Poole for 38-year-old Chris Paul. Now, I understand if they were like, okay, we want to keep Draymond, things are too far gone. Jordan Poole, four years, $140 million. He looked bad last season most of the year, terrible in the playoffs most of the games. I understand. I understand wanting to trade him, but Chris Paul being what you bring back, and you have to give up picks to go get him, that just does not seem right. Like, it genuinely feels like the Wizards fleeced the Warriors on this, and that the Warriors brought in Mike Dunleavy Jr., and he knew he had to do something about this Jordan Poole, Draymond Green situation. But the thing that I can't figure out is how Draymond Green fits in all of this, because Obviously, they were saying, you know, you can't have Steph, Clay, Draymond, and Poole all on the books. Chris Paul is still a max. He's making $30 plus million plus this year. Like, they're going to still have to do some cap gymnastics to, to make it all work. But I would assume Chris Paul coming there is a sign that Draymond will be staying. Because if they lose Draymond and trade, Chris Paul, or, and trade Jordan Poole to bring in Chris Paul... Fans, I think, are going to lose it. I, I don't think fans are going to be, you know, that's not going to be acceptable. With Chris Paul coming in, it does give a little bit more opportunity to have another playmaker. You can run more Steph Curry um, movement type offense, see what kind of shots he can generate for guys like Steph, for Clay, 
uh, and kind of run the offense through both Draymond and CP3. So I, I see that, I guess. I can understand that being the idea. But like I said, if I was a Warriors fan, I would be a little worried right now because Jordan Poole could just be the first domino. The Warriors with Bob Myers tried this. We're going to rebuild and reload and do it all at once. We're going to run two timelines at once. And they won a title, but they won it without really any contributions from those young players outside of Jordan Poole. So like Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, James Wiseman's already gone. Uh, it makes me really curious if they're going to trade all of these young players that they you know, have spent this, this capital on and this time investing in. They're going to just trade them all to go on one last run. And I, I think it'll all depend if they do, like if they trade Kaminga tonight or Moody tonight, as has been rumored, um, they've been shopping them around. It'll all depend on what they get back. If it's three trades that are like this, like Jordan Poole and picks for Chris Paul, it's going to be, it's going to be tough times for Warriors fans, but we will see. This is just one transaction, but as the first transaction, and coming off of Bob Myers, who was so shrewd in the moves that he made, it's hard not to do a comparison. It's hard not to look and be like, Bob Myers would not have done that. I don't know about this one. Um, if anything, it just it solidifies that while the team may the the roster may be the same in terms of you know Steve Kerr's coaching, Steph Clay, probably Draymond. This is a different Warriors team than what we have seen over the last few years with Bob Myers. So it remains to be seen what's going to happen all around. I do not really understand this outside of uh, Steph Curry movement offense, but also like you could probably get anyone out there running point and Steph Curry would move around and be able to get himself open shots because he's the best shooter of all time. So I don't think you needed to pay a premium just to make sure it was Chris Paul of all people that was running it, but... I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. The draft is tonight. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I'll, I'll try to be back after the draft with a, a recap or if there's anything else crazy that decides to happen. Uh, we'll cover that as well. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, let, let me know. Warriors fans in particular, how, how are you feeling?